Here we're going to test the different power consumption um, between using a pressurized buffer tank or just using a pump. So for this test, we've got a variable speed drive 1.5 kilowatt pump. It's set to 4.5 bar and it's set to allow the pressure to drop to about 1.2 bar before switching on again. And this should give us a good indication sort of uh, you really using the variable speed drive for the different flow rates in that to save power versus using the variable speed drive and using a pressurized buffer tank whether it gives you a measurable um, benefit in power consumption or not. So first what, we, what we've got here is we've got, we've got five, um, five gallon bottles which is 18.9 liters. This we're going to use to simulate small loads in the house. So like for example if a toilet flushes that's five liters. So you'd want to fill it up in batches of four, four times. If a washing machine washes you might find that you're using 10 liters at a time. So we want to simulate using these small loads and then also we've got a 250 litre tank here which would simulate say a shower for 20 minutes and then we want to see what is our total power consumption for filling all these bottles and doing the shower with and without the tank. So first let's let's see what we can do without the tank. Okay and we're now at this ridge here a little under the middle of the ridge. It's now we'll repeat the same test with the pressurized buffer tank connected and see see what we end up getting then. Okay now put all the same water back in that tank and now we're trying it with the 60 liter buffer tank connected. So immediately the difference is the the pressure pump does, hasn't turned on yet so you, you, it allows it to run quite a bit longer before having to switch on. Okay. And uh, let's limit it to our low flow. Okay, so that's all of these bottles filled. And um, yeah, I think it only turned on twice, which is actually very impressive. After all of that, very impressive result. We managed to use um, on the first test without the tank 750 watt hours and on the second test where we used the buffer tank um, we only actually used 290 watt hours so we used less than half the power um, by using the buffer tank um, to reduce the cycling of the pump. So we've done our test with these bottles doing the same procedure again um, with the variable speed drive pump set to three and a half bar instead of four and a half. It definitely used less power because we saw peak power consumption drop from um, 1,400 watt um, while doing this sort of toilet flush simulation to about just over 1,000 watt. So it was definitely using less but it was still using a significant amount of power. So what we found is we used 300 watt hours to fill this at the lower pressure versus the 100 watt hours we used when filling it at the higher pressure but using the pressurized buffer tank um, to reduce the pump cycling. So, because in effect what happens is the pump is constantly on with this, it just is on, turns off, on, turns off. Whereas with the buffer tank, it was running a longer period of time but it only actually cycled on three times and then each time it was pumping at a much higher volume which it's more efficient at um, while filling the bottle plus filling the tank at the same time. So basically the conclusion we've seen here today is for the price of a buffer, a, a buffer tank um, it's almost a no-brainer with, with any pump as depending on your use case we basically saw half to um, a third of the power consumption where it will not be the case is if it's a pump being used for irrigation where it's just running massive amounts of water then a tank's not really going to make a difference to your power consumption but sort of domestic use which is small amounts and on and off or short showers even we actually saw that it made a, quite a significant difference.